You welcome back to the program News Hub. Well, we were looking at the current proliferation of small arms in the country, growing rate of insecurity as well. And um, we were addressing the role of the citizenry in helping to point the fingers uh, when weapons come into the nation. But we know that witness protection is not uh, really yet in place in Nigeria. There's an act that was signed in 2017 uh, by the National Assembly. But just how much of protection do you have when you speak out against criminality, especially when the criminality have a lot of firepower behind them? Uh, we're going to be joined once again by Bish Johnson from the nation's capital, Abuja. Bish, do you think that we're doing enough in terms of witness protection? I'm sure you, know, you have some idea of the way it works in the United States of America and how other countries actually apply this sort of laws to enable people to speak up, now knowing for the world that the states will protect them in return. How do you think we can actually begin to have this in full force in Nigeria? Okay, let me make sure correctly. You're talking about witness uh, protection? Yes. Okay. Um, look, the problem we have in Nigeria is not that we don't have enough laws on our books. Uh, we do have enough laws in our books, but our problem has been constantly and consistently our failure to be able to enforce and implement those laws. I'm sure there is a witness protection uh, uh, act in place in this country. It's just that we are not um, implementing them enough to infuse that confidence in the people that, look, uh, you report a crime, uh, be rest assured that your, you be, your identity will not be given out and you'll be protected. I've seen instances in America where people report crime and FBI will relocate them from where they, they lived at the time that they, they reported that crime to the FBI and relocate them to another state, completely change their identity, even sometimes change their passport and stuff like that to make sure that they are kept safe provide them with a means of livelihood because they reported crime. And the crime, uh, they help in dismantling maybe a gang or some kind of group that has terrorized the country. So I'd like to see something like that happen in this country um, when citizens will be assured that look, if they report um, crime to law enforcement, that there will not be some uh, reper repercussions um, on their own part. Uh, we've not gotten to that level. Until we get to that level, we're not going to have um, the kind of confidence uh, that the citizens need to have um, to allow them to be able to report serious crimes without them feeling that there will be some kind of uh, price to pay. Okay, so let's bring it back to the proliferation of uh, arms. You know, let's cast our minds back when, uh, to when there was um, some kind of unrest in the Niger Delta region. And government now said, okay, let's give you amnesty uh, to those who were uh, protesting the Niger Delta militants and then surrender to us and let's make peace. So I'm talking about the power of incentive now. If you incentivize this and you say, bring your arms, those of you who have illegal arms, bring your arms and you know, we'll, we'll sort you out or we give you something. Do you think that will work? Well, we have experimented that in the past and uh, it hasn't worked. Um, it didn't work in the past. I don't think it's going to work now. I don't know if you are aware that uh, there was something like that that was done in Casino State. Um, that did not work. Um, they, those people didn't live up to their own part of the deal. Because uh, what happens is that, look, when you say bring in your arms and they will buy them or will pay for them, basically what you have done is You've given them money to go instead of having one weapon. You've given them enough money to go and buy two or three uh, more weapons, and they will bring them back into the country, and they will continue their 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 their, their terror of uh, of destruction uh, and, and and crime. So it does not work. It hasn't worked before. I don't think it will work now. Um, this can only work if when you take in those arms, you make sure that they are not bringing in more weapons by making sure that you are securing your border. 
Look, Nigeria is not going to run away from this. It can't run away from this. Nigeria must do is they do heavy lifting of nation building. And one of those heavy lifting of nation building is building strong institutions that actually function, building infrastructures, which includes securing your border. You must do the heavy lifting. If you don't do the heavy lifting and you want to find a shortcut, shortcut cannot work. They've never worked before. They're not going to work now. So we've experimented this, bringing your arms and we pay you for it. And, uh, and, and it didn't work. What happened is that they went back and they purchased more weapons and they continued. So it won't work. The way our investigations work, this, seems, this needs to be addressed if we're going to achieve great strides. You made mention of witness protection being in place uh, from in, in other countries. Do you think that we need to do more in terms of infiltrating the gangs and knowing who and who are in charge and where their sources come from, as well as um, you know, planting people within such gangs in Nigeria or even within people from the regular society to act as informants for the government? Do you think that we need to do more in that area? In terms of uh, informants or in terms of witness protection, let me make sure I got the right. Yes, uh, in terms of informants, getting information, uh, the police planting their personnel in the public, in the criminal elements, and helping to bring them in, uh, as well as you know having infiltrations of these syndicates. Yeah, sure, sure. You're going back now to intelligence, which earlier I have alluded to. That is the that is that is the core of the issue. Um, you want to solve? You, you can't solve crime if you don't have intel. It, just, it would just be like a, a blind man walking around in the darkness because there is no way you solve the problem of crime if you don't have intelligence. Intelligence is the key. And having an informant program in place, which I think we do have in place, is just that just like every other thing that we have failed to execute properly, we are not executing that program very properly. Informant program is a, a key component of intelligence gathering. Because let me tell you, if you want to catch a terrorist, you have to look like one so that you'll be able to fit in into that their community and be able to get as much intel as you can get without being detected. And that's what informants do. And so, yes, we need to do a lot, lot more in terms of that program by making it more robust and ensuring that those we have in that program are kept um, covered so that way uh, they are not exposed to uh, unnecessary danger or risk uh, in the course of doing that job. So yes, we've not done enough. More needs to be done um, to get to the stage that we need to uh, be when it comes to that program. I'm aware that there's a program like that. It's just that we are not fully executing it the way it ought to be executed. Robust intelligence gathering, well-manned borders, and synergy between security agencies as well as collaboration between government at all levels is what is needed to curb this menace, right? I think it's well said. Thank you so, so, so much for being a part of the show this morning. We appreciate it. So we have been with... Thank you Bish very much for having me. Yes, thank you. Yeah, we have been with Bish Johnson, former U.S. Army Captain and Chairman, CB's Security Services and Consulting in Nigeria. Right, we'll take a short break and when we come back, there's lots more for you. This time we're going to be talking about the rising rate of inflation in Nigeria. 14% assistance right now. Stay with us. We'll be right back.